Hello and welcome to Wasted Potential, the show where we discuss the wasted potential of our favourite plot lines. For this episode, we're going to be taking the segment from my Big Injustice critique, where I suggested an alternative take on the concept to make it a bit less generic and, well, shit, let's be honest. And fleshing it out a bit more, using some extra details I've come up with since, and used in a short story I wrote based on the concept. Definitely check out the critique so you fully understand where I'm coming from here. So, Injustice Gods Among Us, a DC comic fighting game by the team behind Mortal Kombat. The story focuses on a universe where the Joker nukes Metropolis and uses Scarecrow's fear toxin to trick Superman into murdering his pregnant wife. Superman kills the Joker and establishes a totalitarian state where criminals are executed. Just about the entire Justice League agrees with Superman for very poorly defined reasons, except for Batman because he has to be the one in the right at all times, meaning he often has to battle the entire evil slash incorrect slash mind controlled league and come out on top. He forms the insurgent which in the game is just him, Harley Quinn, the late Green Arrow, and secretly Lex Luthor. Because another scenario we've not had enough of, apparently, is Batman vs Superman, specifically with Superman as the bad guy. The story proper takes place five years later, where most of Batman's allies are dead, he's in hiding, and he and Lex scheme to summon the Justice League of another universe to come and help. The other League, consisting of characters who are actually written as true to the originals, help take down Superman and the other evil heroes. In the end, only two of the Regime characters show any remorse for their actions, which doesn't include the utterly irredeemable Wonder Woman or Superman. Wonder Woman is an absolute monster for reasons that wouldn't be explained for a good few years, ahem, and Superman heat beams a 12 year old boy through the face. The five years were then fleshed out in a comic series that is better in many ways but is still shackled by the constraints of the game's plot and tone, so it too is hot garbage. So to summarise my core issues with this plot, 1. Batman vs Superman is played out. 2. Evil Superman is played out. 3. Batman being the good guy against the rest of the league is played out. 4. The other universe heroes arriving to resolve everything themselves after 5 years of conflict is an unsatisfying resolution. 5. Good Superman arriving in the final chapter to fight evil Superman after being mostly absent, while thematically appropriate, is point 4 within point 4. 6. Way too many people die, especially at the hands of Superman. If I had full control, I'd ignore the Civil War thing entirely and go with the crime syndicate and alternate versions of the villains as heroes in a cross-dimensional battle. But instead of delving into that, I'm going to keep the basic story of a hero going bad and creating a rift in the superhero community and change certain key details to show how this could have been done better. Let's begin. The story starts with the destruction of Gotham instead of Metropolis. It's always bugged me that it was a Batman villain who ruined Superman's life instead of, you know, a Superman villain. God forbid anyone other than Batman characters has a reason to be here. Joker is the trigger man, but he's backed by Ra's al Ghul, someone with actual resources and connections that could actually acquire a nuke, unlike the Joker acting alone. Batman loses a lot in the destruction of Gotham, his home, Alfred, Tim, Jim and the GCPD. In his grief, Batman decides enough is enough. He gathers Red Hood, Azrael, Huntress, his allies that are willing to kill, and he raids Arkham Asylum, which was outside the blast radius. I feel like Batman would make a lot more sense as the one to go bad, seeing how he's always riding the line, and the subject of killing villains seems to come up a lot more often with him than with Clark. Plus, the all-powerful Superman has a far easier time saving lives and ending situations non-lethally compared to Batman, a normal human. Therefore, it's much more reasonable for Bruce to be pushed over the edge than Clark. Now, conventional wisdom advises that the villain have the upper hand until the hero overcomes them in the final confrontation. As such, having Superman be the villain makes more sense on paper since, arguably, the reason Batman vs Superman works as a concept is the underdog factor. Batman, a mere mortal, vs Superman who is unto a god, you know, David and Goliath and all that. But the reason Batman even has a chance against Superman is his preparedness, especially in a setting with an established league where Bruce has countermeasures in place for them all. Also, Superman holding back because if he lets loose, Batman is fucked. A rogue Superman is scary and dangerous, but a rogue Batman already has plans in place to stop all the big hitters before anyone knows what's happening. So I see Superman as being the real underdog in a fight between the two. Anyway, some villains manage to escape Arkham, including Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. Those two specifically go to the League and tell them that Batman's gone crazy and he's killing everyone in the asylum. The heroes don't believe them until the point is made that Arkham escapees wouldn't go running to the League unless they had a damn good reason. Plus, Catwoman arrives to back up their claim. Superman says he'll go and meet with Batman to find out what's going on, confident he can deal with it. He and Bruce
Bruce meets in the Batcave, which just about managed to survive the blast. When confronted, Bruce shows Clark security footage of the assault on Arkham, displaying various minor villains like Professor Pig and the Ventriloquist being killed, capped off with Batman cutting the Joker's throat open with a Batarang. He explains that, yes, he has decided that super criminals need to be executed. Clark tries to talk him down, but Bruce says that it's easy for him to say that when he can end most conflicts before they escalate that far. But Bruce is just a man, and he was the best Gotham had to defend it. The debate goes on until Bruce realises there's no getting through to Clark, so he exposes the kryptonite knuckles in his gauntlets and clocks him one, knocking him out. Bruce imprisons Superman in a Red Sun prison cell, but not for re-education. See, if the game's version of Clark genuinely believed he was doing the right thing, he wouldn't view non-compliant heroes as obstacles to be eliminated. He would instead see them as uninformed allies who insist on viewing the world in a naive, black and white manner. Bruce here has that viewpoint. Throughout the game, instead of cutting back to evil Superman twirling his fucking moustache, we instead see Bruce as he pays regular visits to Clark to try and talk him into joining his side. Clark persists in holding on to his morals and urging Bruce to rediscover his. It becomes very clear that Bruce gets no enjoyment out of this and is actually incredibly guilt-ridden about the whole thing. The big problem with these big dumb superhero versus superhero stories is that they have an awful tendency to display willful ignorance of the fact that these people are friends and have been so for over a decade. Batman and Superman would surely want their best friend to join them. They wouldn't immediately start punching one another because real humans don't do that. When Superman fails to check in and Flash and other heroes scope things out, it becomes clear that Batman has indeed gone rogue. Wonder Woman, still holding on to hope, gathers the League to confront Bruce and try to talk him down, or failing that, take him in. Bruce has a lot of reinforcements, including mercenaries like Deathstroke and Deadshot, and a few of the less evil villains, leaving the confrontation at a stalemate. And then Bruce makes his intentions clear in a TV broadcast, declaring his new crusade to the world. My reason for choosing to have Wonder Woman as the main hero is partly just to avoid having yet more Batman vs Superman, but also because historically she's always been weirdly underutilized. In fact, did you know she's never headlined a video game before? Not even an obscure Game Boy game from the mid 2000s. For number three of the Trinity, that's weak. But more than that, I wanted to highlight the kind of person she's supposed to be. Of all the characters utilized in the Injustice franchise, none of them have been more horribly misrepresented than Wonder Woman. The honest, kind, compassionate woman who prefers to give her enemies a chance at redemption over locking them away is now a bloodthirsty sociopath who blatantly lies to people's faces, disrespects the memories of her dead friends, and regularly tries to murder her opponents. Oh, and let's not forget that the Regime version is the only character to lose three fights in the game. Everyone else gets two at most, shared across both incarnations, and her Prime counterpart isn't much better either. Wonder Woman deserves a chance to display how capable she is, and how differently she operates from her overexposed compatriots. More on her in the future. As time passes, more and more heroes and villains are sucked into the conflict, some joining Batman's pragmatic faction, like maybe military man Hal Jordan or occasional killer Green Arrow. Others join Wonder Woman's side out of a desire to remain moral guides for the rest of the world, fear of being killed by Batman, or revenge for those he's already killed. Every confrontation between Diana and Bruce sees both, desperately urging one another to see things from their perspective, Bruce bringing hypotheticals of Diana losing loved ones, and Diana bringing Bruce's original mission and the desires of those he did lose to the table. Fighting is always a last resort, though they notably resort to it quicker each time, until Diana finds herself wondering if her only option is to kill Bruce and vice versa, a concept neither one relishes as opposed to Regime Superman immediately resorting to it every fucking time. Bruce's side kill a number of villains and a few heroes are killed by accident or by the villains either side employs. For the most part, Diana takes villains in to give them a chance to reform, which a fair few do, while Bruce imprisons a bunch of heroes so he can try to talk them around, which works on some like the impressionable Shazam. There is also a rivalry between the three remaining Robins. Jason is on Bruce's side, Dick is on Diana side and Damien is torn between the two, understanding that killing is sometimes necessary, but disagreeing with Bruce going back on his principles so fiercely. Naturally, this makes things harder for Bruce as he has ideological battles with his sons multiple times. If Dick dies here, it's treated with the gravitas it deserves instead of just being a throwaway line that pays off embarrassingly in the comic. Catwoman is also a prominent figure, playing the role Diana should have had in the game, as someone attempting to get through to the fallen hero through her love and to make him see that he's going down the wrong path. Eventually, she reluctantly accepts that there really is no getting through to him, and she defects to the other side to help take him down and get him the help he needs. You know, instead of stoking the flame and looking like a goddamn Sith Lord. 
During Act 2, the League goes after Ras, thinking that bringing him to justice might turn Bruce around on his position, showing him that the old ways do still work. However, Bruce follows them. Diana loses in a sword fight with Ras and is almost killed. Bruce swoops in and takes down Ras himself, killing him, his view that lethal force is the only option reaffirmed. With this, both sides realise that the final battle is drawing near. Batman sends his forces to multiple cities to divide Diana's forces so he can fight her one on one. The alternate universe League helps release the remaining captive heroes in a raid on Batman's base. Thanks to this, they join the various battles and are able to turn the tide, allowing a full team to go after Bruce. When confronted, Bruce reveals his new armoured Batsuit designed specifically to take down various leaguers, lethally if need be. A few go down, leaving us with the final battle of Diana and a weakened Clark, possibly with Prime Bruce to complete the Trinity. They defeat him, but when they spur him, he doesn't drop a... You'll have to kill me. Instead, he finally opens his eyes and is genuinely remorseful that he let things get this far. Bruce and his followers are incarcerated and Clark makes a point of visiting Bruce every day. Even after everything Bruce did to him after spending years in a red sun saturated cell because that, my friends, is Superman. As I hope I've managed to illustrate here, Injustice is kind of a pastiche of previous ideas that are overused to the point of being cliches, and it would have been a much stronger product if they'd at least tried to put a few new spins on them. Is it too much to ask for a DC fighting game to give me DC heroes and DC villains instead of these awful misrepresentations whose personalities diverge from their original cause too far too quickly to be believable, who fight each other at the drop of a hat and who are total waste of the talents of the legendary iconic actors who are brought together to bring this cast to life. The original characters do not suit this kind of story at all, and that, I think, is where the major problem lies. Particularly when using established characters like this, you should let the characters and their personalities determine the plot, not the other way around. If you like this video, why not subscribe and check out some of these other videos? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they can suffer along with you.